All right, now we're talking about bullet balance. In this video, we're going to cover different things like axis of symmetry, principal axis of inertia, statically imbalanced projectiles, dynamically imbalanced projectiles, and uh, we're also going to talk about how unbalanced pro uh, bullets can experience lateral throw off and aerodynamic jump. So uh, in our last videos, we talked about um, why spin stabilization is required to get these things uh, flying straight. And basically what we boiled it down to is that in a rifle bullet, the center of gravity is actually located behind the center of pressure. Your center of gravity is constantly going to be trying to get in front of that center of pressure. Uh, you know, that center of pressure is going to be the aerodynamic friction, the aerodynamic pressure uh, being applied laterally along the, the, the sides of the bullet. And uh, your, your center of gravity is constantly, if it ever gets the chance, if it's ever wiggled off to the side for any moment, um, that thing is going to try to get in front of there. And that's what's going to cause your uh, really unstable projectiles. It can even cause tumbling if it wasn't stabilized enough by spin. Uh, we also talked about how spin is basically applied to the bullet and increases the rigidity of the spin axis, which makes it much harder to uh, twist that thing out of its uh, principal axis of inertia. So uh, let's just go through real quick and uh, kind of give you an introduction here as to what we're going to talk about. Um, basically, spin is required to stabilize bullets in flight. There are defects in bullet construction that can throw off the balance of these bullets, resulting in uh, statically imbalanced projectiles. Also, uh, things like inboard tipping, uh, where your bullet's not perfectly aligned, these can cause the projectile to be dynamically imbalanced, which can cause things like aerodynamic jump to occur. Okay, and the final thing we're going to talk about here is that the uh, spin rate that we're d discussing in the earlier video about bullet stability um, can actually increase the deviation one can experience due to these factors. So um, we're answering the question uh, posted on the, the last video of why don't we just uh, add extra spin rate to these bullets to make sure they're really, really, really balanced. And this video will hopefully answer those questions. So there are some uh, terms we're going to have to define here before we get started so that you can understand where we're at. Uh, the first one, is center of gravity. We talked about that in the video before. That's basically the uh, where the, the mass is centrally located inside the projectile. Hopefully, um, if everything's in a perfect bullet, the mass would be located on the center line of the bullet. Sometimes it's not, and we'll discuss that in a second. But that's your center of gravity. We discussed that earlier in more detail. The axis of symmetry is going to be very important for this. That's basically the center line of of the bullet. It's the center of the profile. If you're going to look at a bullet on end, it would be right in the middle. Um, that's where you have this, the symmetry of the bullet, you know, a radial symmetry, uh, kind of shooting off in 360 degrees in all directions. So that's axis of symmetry. The next term we're going to want to be familiar with is the principal axis of inertia. And that's basically where all your different inertia forces are centered. Um, that can vary based on exactly where the center of gravity is. But as the, the, the bullet is spinning, there's going to be some point on which uh, all your different inertial forces are going to be centered. And that's what that's talking about right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and examine uh, a statically imbalanced projectile and how it can experience lateral throw-off. Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a picture of a bullet that is statically imbalanced. Now, uh, in this picture, we see the center of gravity uh, noted here is uh, basically off center, but its principal axis of inertia uh, is gonna be located on with that center of gravity, and it's still parallel to the axis of symmetry, which is the center line of the spatial unit of where the bullet actually uh, takes up space, right? So your, your, your mass is centered off to the side, so your principal axis of inertia will be centered on the mass, obviously, right? Or it's going to be off closer in that direction. So um, this is a case where uh, it's very common, even with really good rifle bullets, and this is exaggerated in this picture so you can see it more easily, but uh, 
bullets are not always perfectly concentric. And uh, you can have imperfections along the different edges of uh, how thick the jacket of the bullet is, for example. Um, or uh, your, the density of your lead on one side might be a little less dense than the other due to uh, imperfections in how it was swaged. Or if you have a void in there someplace, microscopic voids can happen. Uh, if the shape is slightly off just a tiny bit, um, or if it was deformed, this can all throw off your center of gravity. Uh, which will throw off your uh, principal axis of inertia. Now, ideally, in a perfect bullet, your jacket would be perfectly uniform all the way around the projectile. Everything would be perfectly symmetrical, and your center of gravity be, would, would be right on that center line. And uh, if that was all perfect, then your principal axis of inertia would be right on the center line as well. And the result would be a perfectly balanced bullet. Now, however, in reality, uh, you're never going to have a perfectly balanced bullet. There's always microscopic imperfections in how the thing was made. So you're always going to have some degree of imbalance. And a, a statically imbalanced projectile is arranged like this. Uh, what this can cause is uh, if you're uh, shooting groups and you had perfectly balanced bullets and everything else was the same and you didn't wiggle and your barrel was vibrating, everything was just perfectly consistent, theoretically all the bullets should go in one hole. One of the reasons uh, why the bullets all don't go into one hole, you know, uh, when we uh, erase internal ballistics from the equation, when we're just talking external ballistics, is uh, imbalanced bullets can cause lateral throw-off. And uh, if we looked at the statically imbalanced projectile, basically what happens is that the center of gravity is off center from the line of symmetry and this can uh, change the bullet's principal axis of inertia in which case this is uh, going to cause the bullet to fly in the direction in which the uh, center of gravity was last facing when it exited the bore. So uh, if we look at this here at a statically imbalanced projectile the center of gravity is off to the side. It's beside the axis of symmetry, okay? Um, when this thing starts going down the, the rifling, right, and it's going through the bore, that center of gravity being not on center is going to travel in kind of a helical pattern, kind of in a spiral on its way down. It's going to make one revolution for every uh, 10 inches or whatever your, your twist rate is, right? So as it's traveling down on this helical pattern, it's going extremely fast, and you have a lot of uh, force, uh, inertial force, uh, on, on the bullet there. And uh, when this thing exits the muzzle, it's actually going to veer off in the direction tangent to that helical path. So the exact direction on which way this thing's going to fly is going to basically depend on where that heavy side of the bullet happened to be facing when it exited the muzzle. So that's one thing that can cause um, lateral throw off. Uh, also, you know, a lateral throw-off can occur if a bullet is tipped inside the bore as well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, one thing to consider about twist is that the faster the twist is, uh, the more lateral throw-off you will have because your inertial forces will be greater. So if your bullet is uh, imbalanced, the center of gravity is off-center, the higher twist you have can really increase those uh, inertial forces, which can increase your lateral throw-off if things aren't perfect. So um, basically, the thing to take home from this uh, discussion is that if you have very, very well-balanced bullets, you can get away with a really tight twist, and it's not going to throw them off too much because your balance is good. However, if you want to... Uh, uh, something that's a little more forgiving for uh, imbalanced bullets, um, you don't want too much twist because if you have too much, um, more than you need to stabilize it, uh, you're going to be amplifying these effects and you're going to be amplifying lateral throw off, which is a significant factor in which causes dispersion of uh, shot groupings. So um, something to be aware of. That's one of the reasons why guys say, you know, you can't have too fast of a twist. It's not going to be accurate. Well, that's what they're kind of talking about there. It's one of the factors. There's multiple other things happening as well, but that's one of the big ones. So the amount of lateral throw-off you're going to experience is very much dependent on the quality of the projectiles you're using. How well are these things balanced? And also, how uh, well-oriented are they inside the bore? 
Uh, if you have a lot of run out or if it's crooked in there, this is going to amplify this. So if your ammunition is really good quality, uh, this will minimize your lateral throw off. And uh, this is one of the external things that can be experienced due to an imbalanced bullet. We talked about the internal ballistics earlier, but that's uh, basically in a nutshell lateral throw off made pretty simple. Okay. Um, let's talk about another thing called aerodynamic jump. Now, you can have a dynamically unbalanced projectile, uh, even if it's uh, statically imbalanced with the center of gravity uh, being perfectly centered in the bore as it leaves the muzzle. Um, if that bullet is positioned crooked as it's flying down uh, through that bore, your uh, axis of symmetry might be good on your bullet, but it's not going to be aligned with your axis of inertia because if that thing's crooked as it's spinning down the bore, your uh, inertial forces are not going to be online with your symmetry. You know what I'm saying? So this can cause aerodynamic jump, and this is primarily caused by inboard tipping. Uh, wind can cause this. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, and there's other factors that can cause this as well, and aerodynamic jump is something uh, basically your, your uh, air resistance forces are not even as it exits the muzzle and that's going to cause uh, also a negative impact on your uh, shot dispersion. So it's highly dependent on how the bullet was positioned as it exits the muzzle. Not so much with where your center of gravity is. Your center of gravity might be right on that line with the bore as it leaves the muzzle, but due to the tilting in there, it's going to cause aerodynamic jump. So uh, let's summarize real quick here. Basically, again, spin is required to stabilize these bullets in flight. That's obvious. However, defects in the bullet or in bore tipping can cause lateral throw off or aerodynamic jump, which can cause the bullet to basically fly in an unwanted direction. Um, so the, the cure to this is uh, basically when you're selecting your barrel twist rates, you don't want to go with too much twist for the bullet you're using because this will amplify these things and you're always going to come across bullets even with really good quality match bullets uh, where they're not perfectly uh, concentric. Uh, that's not that's never going to happen. You can always zoom in farther and find imperfections. So uh, in these cases, uh, the faster the barrel twist rate, the more deviation you're going to experience. So basically when you're wondering which twist to get, go ahead and just pick the barrel with the slowest twist rate that's going to stabilize that bullet effectively, okay? So if it says uh, 1 in 10 uh, you know, is needed to stabilize this projectile, go with the 1 in 10. There's no reason to go with a 1 in 8 uh, just to be extra. That's going to increase your lateral jump and your uh, aerodynamic jump if you have uh, any inconsistencies in your ammunition here, okay? So uh, don't go with too much twist. There's also other things we're going to talk about in the next video here, uh, over-stabilization. Uh, it can also be amplified uh, if you have too much twist. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, the heart of the message here is just uh, go with the manufacturer's recommendation for the twist that they have uh, determined it works best with their rifle bullets. You know, they test these things usually pretty comprehensively in-house before they advertise which uh, twist is recommended for them. And uh, there are the different mathematical expressions expressions of twist like we discussed earlier but if you watch the video before this um, you will understand that it's best to go with the empirical data and you can test these things out for yourself as well especially if you're uh, operating in uh, climatic conditions or different air density zones than were used during their tests because uh, each different rifle is going to stabilize a bullet differently under different uh, air conditions, air density, basically. So there's a lot of different factors, and it's best just to run your own test. But don't go with too much twist. All right. Next video is on overstabilization.
Right.